Hello, I'm Luminous Star. Welcome to another vlog day. Mwah. My stars, thank you so much for joining me today, and I certainly hope that you are doing well today or tonight, wherever you may be. Signs that you're dealing with a flying monkey. These particular signs are very subtle, or they're not very clear until you're actually experiencing them, and sometimes not until after your relationship with a narcissist is over. Your overall process for thriving forward is compromised when you have flying monkeys around. Some people may be wondering, well, why would the flying monkey even agree to do the dirty work to hoover you back in? All right, well, this is because they have something called resonance or they vibe. See, narcissists and some positive personality types, they choose flying monkeys that they have resonance with because they're more prone, okay? And they're more open to do the dirty work because narcissists and some cluster personality types, as a lot of us know from experience, they study people. So they know the vices, they know the characteristics of the flying monkey or the enabler. But since we're talking about the flying monkey here, I'm gonna focus on them in this vlog. Flying monkeys expect to be supplied by the narcissist. They work for the narcissist. Look at it like this. When you go to your job, when it's time to get your pay, who signs your paycheck? The narcissist is the one that signs the paycheck of the flying monkey. So when it's time to be supplied, they're not gonna come to you, they're gonna go to the narcissist. So when it's time for them to get the payment, they're not gonna check for you. They're gonna go for the narcissist and say, hey, where's my pay? Flying monkeys do not hoover for free. Flying monkeys and narcissists, they have resonance. In other words, they vibe. They're pretty much on the same page. What some flying monkeys don't realize is that after you have been hoovered back in, they have done all that dirty work and they go to the narcissist expecting to supply or the pay, that's when the narcissist pulls the rug out from under him or her and they're saying your services are no longer needed. See, when flying monkeys are discarded, this is something that sometimes it even takes them by surprise. Sometimes, because they have a hidden agenda, it is the flying monkey that instigates your getting hoovered back in. Sometimes they facilitate your getting hoovered, while the narcissist is often the one that conducts the whole shenanigan. The flying monkey may be a family member of yours. One of their hidden agendas is to get you hoovered back in so they are in favor of the narcissist. Flying monkeys sometimes make the mistake of thinking when they are highly favored, that means that they are excluded from being discarded. That's not true. Narcissists often discard the flying monkey after you get hoovered back in. Sign number one that you're dealing with a flying monkey is that the flying monkey will often try to connect you to the narcissist after you have gone no contact. In other words, they try to make a connection where there isn't a connection. A flying monkey will remind you of a special date or special dates to the narcissist or dates that are special to the narcissist, such as their anniversary, the birthday, okay, or any other special date that they may have. Flying monkeys will often remind you to celebrate that date. You've, no, you've gone no contact. You don't have a relationship with a narcissist anymore. And this is what the flying monkey knows. But again, they have a hidden agenda to get you hoovered back in. So in order to do that, they have to get you to focus on the narcissist. Don't be surprised when the flying monkey starts to whisper in your ear and remind you to, or make some suggestions of what you may do for the narcissist on their special day, such as their birthday. They may even suggest that you get the narcissist a present. I know, sometimes flying monkeys can have a lot of nerve and audacity because they're trying to get you to focus on the narcissist. And if you keep on focusing on the narcissist, you may even think it's not such a bad idea to reinvest in him or her. Flying monkeys often hoover you back in because they have a hidden agenda. This is something, the reason why I keep repeating this is this is something that we often overlook when we're dealing with flying monkeys. Sometimes we don't even know that the flying monkey is hoovering us back in, but it's a one-two punch to the hoovering process. It is the hoover before the hoover. This can never be accomplished without a flying monkey. 
And this is what a lot of narcissists have come to realize. See, by the time a lot of us are hoovered back in, we don't even realize the first step to the hoovering process. Sometimes we never realize it. The first sucker punch is when they are brought up in conversation. Flying monkeys will bring the narcissists up in conversation. Second sucker punch is when they have actually hoovered you back in because now you're actually in the relationship. You're in the codependent narcissistic relationship again. So watch out for this. Remember, the hoovering process cannot be actually done without the assistance of a flying monkey. Sign number two that you're dealing with a flying monkey is that they actually remind you of your narcissist. They remind you of a particular cluster personality type. Now you've gone no contact. You can see things a little bit more clearly. Now that you're low contact, you may be able to see things a little bit more clearly. But the bottom line is this, when that flying monkey is around, or it could be several of them, you may even think to yourself, wow, if I didn't know any better, you know, you're just like so-and-so and you're thinking about the narcissist. So narcissists and flying monkeys often have similar vices and they often have similar characteristics. And sometimes their hidden agendas to get you hoover back in are not so similar. But sign number two again is when that flying monkey reminds you too much of the narcissist. So it's a little bit too close for comfort. See, flying monkeys and narcissists are not twins. They're more like first cousins because they have a hidden agenda that may not be similar, but their characteristics often are. When the flying monkey gets your hoover back in, sometimes the triangulation is set in place. The narcissist, again, the narcissist is the one that conducts the whole shenanigan of the hoovering process while the flying monkey facilitates it or they instigate it. This again has everything to do with their hidden agendas to get you who were back in. So the flying monkey and the narcissist and there you are, there's a triangulation going on. The biggest piece of that triangulation pie goes to the narcissist, never to the flying monkey. The triangulation is set into play until the narcissist decides to discard of the flying monkey if they do so. Sometimes the flying monkey gets to stick around for a long time. The flying monkey expects supply from the narcissist while the narcissist expects supply from you after you're hoovered back in. Sign number three that you are dealing with a flying monkey is that you get a sense of or you discover that you have been betrayed not only by the flying monkey, but by the narcissist. But this is what's very interesting. You've been betrayed by the narcissist, but because the flying monkey has been whispering in your ear about the narcissist, now you're nostalgic. You're all giddy and gushy <laughs> over the narcissist again. So whatever they've done, including betraying you, gets put in the back burner or put on the back burner. It fades into the background you decide that the flying monkey now has taken the place of the narcissist. Very creepy when you think about it. But the flying monkey is the one that you now realize has betrayed you. The flying monkey works for the narcissist. So everything you share with the flying monkey goes right to the narcissist. And the narcissist uses that against you. When you give full detail of everything that's going on in your life, what you're feeling about what's going on in your life, such as getting fired, such as not getting that promotion on the job. See, you're feeling and thinking a certain way and you may confide in the flying monkey. The flying monkey does all of this in hopes to be highly regarded or in favor of your narcissist. One of the things that flying monkeys and narcissists have in common is that they will try to gain at other people's expenses. So a flying monkey, once you find out that they have betrayed you, you get that sense of being violated because the flying monkey actually did gain at your expense. So when you put all this in context, yeah, you find out that the flying monkey actually did gain something at your expense. They're trying to stay in favor of the narcissist at your expense. And sometimes they pull it off. So watch out for these signs because again, like I mentioned, they can be very subtle and sometimes they can cause a lot of grief, if not trauma, 
later down the line. Because you got to think about you got more than one person trying to hoover you back in, trying to get you into a very negative situation. The flying monkey can also betray you because they know that you have gotten out of a bad situation. But they want you back in the bad situation because they want favor. Okay, so it's just like they see you have come up out of some quicksand. The, the flying monkey saw that you were about to drown. You were about to go up under, but you were saved. So you come up out the quicksand and the flying monkey watching it all. So the flying monkey tries to get you back in the quicksand. That's why some of us find out that it is the flying monkey that has also betrayed us, not just the narcissist. Tool number one, focus on your goals. What are your priorities? So prioritize your life, prioritize your values, prioritize your principles. So focus on your ambitions, your passions. Okay, what makes you smile? What makes you laugh? What makes you really feel like getting up out of bed and going after what you want in life? Focus on what it's going to take in order for you to thrive, pass, codependent, narcissistic relationships. Tool number two, build your support base. Navigate it like a boss. You get to decide who and what consists of your support base. It's a good idea to expect support. Don't, you know, you don't have to go around thinking you're never going to get support. See, narcissists want you to think that your life is just hopeless. You're hopeless. You don't count. No, expect support. Expect to be treated well. The narcissist has already shown you that he or she doesn't have the capacity to treat you well, okay? They don't support you. So don't think that this is gonna always be your life, okay? So I feel compassion for people when they tell me that, hey, you know, I don't, I don't know if I can do such and such. Well, especially when I know they have a cluster of personality type in their life. As you thrive forward past codependent narcissistic relationships, Expect to be supported in your efforts to do so. Tool number three, take time out to restore your health, your mind, you know, restore your overall well-being. You've gone through something. Codependent narcissistic relationships are designed to destroy, to damage. Your overall well-being, your health is compromised every time you're in a relationship. Well, close to personality type, such as a narcissist. Take some time out for yourself. You're going to need it. You need a safe environment to express what you have gone through. Sometimes we give anger a bad rap. you got to go ahead and tap into that anger. The anger is only an expression of an injustice. That's all it is. Sometimes people misuse their anger. I get it. But because you've gone through this ordeal called a codependent narcissistic relationship, you have to express what you've gone through. Don't suppress your anger because suppressing your anger will cause health problems. It will even cause you other relationships. It will cost you good relationships. That's what you want, right? Positive relationships. Take time out to restore your spirit, your mind, your overall well-being. Okay? It's worth it. Invest in yourself for a change. I certainly hope everyone has enjoyed this vlog. Please check the description box below. Post your comments. Don't forget to like and or share this vlog. I'm Luminous Star. Until next time, take care of yourself. Take care of yourself because the codependent narcissistic relationship, again, it is not something that's going to edify you. It's not going to elevate you. It's not going to help you thrive forward. It tends to keep people in the sunken place. It's like the stronghold that pulls you down. All right, so I wish everyone the best on their efforts to continue to thrive forward. And of course, keep sharing your stories. You never know who you will inspire by sharing your stories. Until next time, take care. Mwah.